Good morning, one and all. Welcome to Endeavor's webinar on five important factors for a successful enterprise mobility strategy. Today in this webinar, we are going to emphasize on the five most important factors that plays an important role in success of a mobility strategy of an enterprise. The webinar will discuss the need for a CIO to ask following questions ahead of introducing mobility in his organization. Number one, is organization's mobility strategy ready? Number two, what should be considered for preparing the enterprise mobility strategy? Number three, is the enterprise well equipped to manage multiple mobile platforms, tablet devices, face the fragmentation, and manage those devices effectively? Fourth being, has security been considered as a component in this strategy? And finally, the fifth one, is the IT department ready and well equipped to manage the mobile applications? These are the points that we are going to cover up. Now, we have on our panel Mr. Tom Parrish, who is the host of this webinar, Mr. Avinash Bernale, who will be taking up your questions. We will be having a 45 minute session by Tom and then a 15 minute QA session by Avinash. Now, I would like to hand it over to Tom to carry on from here. Over to you, Tom. Okay, this is Tom Parrish. You know, in the earlier days, which weren't that long ago, most of us were concerned in the enterprise with voice apps, SMS, various low-powered devices like PDAs and things like that. Penetration wasn't uh, all that great, but there was very little interconnection with the enterprise other than, of course, email, as we all know. The challenge now, though, is realizing that the entire enterprise infrastructure is available partially through the development of cloud computing, but the entire enterprise infrastructure is available to create more interactive and more powerful mobile apps. And with the pervasiveness of mobile devices, very smart mobile devices that have the ability to interconnect with sophisticated backends, there's an opportunity here to create very competitive applications for the enterprise. The, the issue is getting to the enterprise data servers behind the firewall. Okay. What we see happening in our mobile device is the ability to reach back inside corporate data. So I'm going to let your imagination go here a little bit about what would be possible. I guess at the fundamental level what we're looking at is we want the, the ability to enable faster, better decision-making from the field without having to wait. I think we've probably all experienced some mobile interaction with our Blackberries or maybe your iPhone if you have that opportunity in the enterprise but you still have to drive into the office to approve reports or to approve customer service issues. You really want that done out at the field, not to mention things like dashboards and other things that managements need. So some other ideas that come to mind are access to social media engagement dashboards from your mobile phone, the ability to have mobile workers work away from the office, like I'm saying. There's another issue here, which is just is everybody's moving to a mobile device how do you handle device procurement, software costs, lost devices, telecom expenses with more bandwidth that's required? We don't really have an infrastructure for managing that right now in most enterprises and something you have to give some careful consideration to. And finally, just being able to monitor in real time what's going on with user behaviors at websites, especially websites where all of your you know, income from your business is generated from, from what's going on there. Things like brand loyalty becomes really important, especially if there are problems that come up. And, of course, following social media streams that uh, impact your, your sales. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there is a need to consider the task of building a strategy that shows management gains in operational efficiencies. If we can't put together a strategy that management thinks is going to be worth investing in, Additional income is either going to come from it or operational efficiencies, meaning getting more done with less, less expenses, then they're not going to be interested. So to do this, we need to put something together that touches on total cost of ownership, policies, and management control of all the uh, new devices and the applications, and a detailed plan that covers how we're going to go about implementing and rolling out the new mobile strategy. So there are five challenges to consider here, and we're going to cover these in some detail during the presentation. The first one, of course, is just 
people. You, you know, you target audience to some degree, but it's people. Think about this for a moment from a user interface perspective and a security perspective. You have different types of users. You have different types of user roles. You have enablers, admins, content publishers, support staff. You know, you have external entities. You have customers, suppliers, resellers, contractors. You know, all of these uh, might use an application, but use it differently than one another. So this has to keep the the way in which the application is going to work uh, needs to be reflected uh, from the role that a person has. And that's different from a traditional application that you might download from the Apple App Store. It works one way for all people. We'll get back to that. So you have to create different kinds of user policies for the different kinds of user roles. And then you have issues having to do with data access, control and remote management of the devices. You want the ability to access back into the enterprises we're talking about, and this is sometimes referred to as the back end or the middleware aspects of enterprise servers. And this is a point where your IT group is going to get involved, needless to say, but uh, even if you're not in IT, you need to know about what the elements are here in the strategy. So in this world of mobile vendors, RIM, Apple, Nokia, Google, Android, you're going to have to also think about what platform strategy you're going to put in place. What's the device perspective here? Maybe you start with Android. Maybe you start with Apple and move from there. Maybe the application just fundamentally requires, because of all the different kinds of users, that you're going to have to support all the platforms at once. And this is part of what you need to consider in the strategy. Another thing is distribution of the application. Is it going to be over the air? How are you going to update it? What about the application from a regional perspective in the world? Does it need to work differently in different regions of the world? And then finally, security. How are you going to encrypt the data on the device? If, or do you even need to? What about transportation? And, and uh, security is where we're going to go first. So we're going to talk about enterprise security. To understand security, you need to be thinking about the infrastructure uh, security, data management, and integration with existing systems. From the infrastructure perspective, here's an interesting point for you. Often uh, Endeavor has been faced in the uh, applications they've put together for enterprises with a lot of challenges. And uh, integrating with things like SharePoint servers sometimes becomes tricky for mobile devices, uh, This offering this out as a specific. Not in all cases, but in some cases, the SharePoint has a lot of restrictions on how you set up user permissions. And so somebody has to create a way for those mobile devices who have different needs and different security policies to access SharePoint. And sometimes that's, you know, actually something that needs to be written into the project. So this is what we're talking about is dealing with and finding extensions for a mobility infrastructure into the existing infrastructure. Sometimes you can buy that. Sometimes you have to extend what you have. The, the strategy has to dig in on that and figure out what's best. Then there's the impacts on security policy. Everybody's already got governance and security policy going in the enterprise, um, largely for everything that's interconnected hardwired into the enterprise, but not necessarily wirelessly and remotely. There are issues with regards to data management. At the device level, Is if you're going to be storing information there, does it need to be encrypted or not? If it's going to be transmitted over a network, the Internet, for instance, do you need to set up a secure channel for the transmission of it? Do you need to set up a secure session for that? And on the back end, if you're going to be exchanging data at the back end and you have a secure channel, that's one thing. But then you've got to have permissions to access different rather sensitive secure systems behind the firewall in order for the application to work in an interactive, seamless way. In other words, if you've got a mobile device and you're waiting 15, 20, 30 seconds just to get information back or longer, it starts to become not as useful as you want, so it needs to work quickly. And then there, there are things like directory services look up for people and, and equipment and things of this nature so that there's a common definition as the way uh, people and equipment are, are, are defined and used in applications across all of the enterprise. And so the mobile applications and the mobile infrastructure needs to tie into that in a secure way. All right. As you can see, uh, we can drop down into a great deal of level of security issues, you know, whether we're talking about trying to secure data on the device with various security mechanisms, 
um, or we're trying to transmit it, or we're trying to hook into existing security through the firewall. We're not going to go into a lot of detail here at the moment. I think the point to keep in mind is three aspects of this, data access security, data storage security, and data transmission, like I said earlier. For those of you who have a very specific question with regards to implementation, um, we can ask this at the end. That might be a more appropriate time than, than really doing a deep dive here. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about a use case for that uh, exemplifies what's been done in, with regards to security. And uh, we're going to discuss briefly an application that was developed by Tech Endeavor for Kimberly Clark. Kimberly Clark is a large manufacturer of personal care products of quite a number of manufacturing facilities. And the requirement is man management wanted a more mobile-based reporting system to share real-time manufacturing analytics results uh, with other managers and with people back uh, at the site, of course. And But their big concern was security. How are you going to do this with a mobile device, like an iPhone or whatnot, and handle all the extenuating circumstances? For instance, uh, you want to make sure that the communication between the mobile device and the enterprise is done uh, in a secure way. One of the most secure ways to do that is something called two-factor authentication. And that's a way of setting up a secure session that occurs once, and when that session is over, then, you know, there's no way someone can get in there and figure out how that, that, that interaction was done because a new session starts an entirely new set of encryption keys to get passed back and forth. On a more practical level, this particular device had to handle things like if the iPhone is lost, how do you wipe it? If the iPhone needs to be updated, um, is that going to be done over the over the air, which in this case it would be? Those are the kind of topic areas that need to be considered in a mobile app from a practical point of view. And, and user authentication, of course, is, is part of this. It's mentioned here on the slide. The uh, and, and that's just uh, that we know who you are and you've given us an appropriate password. But it's the two-factor authentication and the ability to securely delete the data if need be on the on the device itself that really gives you that extra margin of safety that management likes to have. Okay, let's move now to integration with the uh, back-end system. To integrate a mobile app into the enterprise back-end, you have to consider how you're going to handle multiple access to data sources. So in that particular application, you could just sort of imagine having to reach back into all kinds of servers in the manufacturing environment, in the accounting department, in the sales, and maybe not the sales, but uh, certainly in the shipping department, and each one having their own needs and their own ways of interfacing. How are you going to interface to those? I have to carefully think about the business logic and the data that must engage with these different endpoints, whether it's Sybase or an Oracle or SAP. You know, everyone's going to have a different way in which you're going to have to interface with it. Um, one way of mitigating some of the problems is reusing or utilizing the metadata that an enterprise has in place for the data exchange across applications. So, you know, applications have access to definitions, like this is, a, this is what a PDF is and what it looks like, an audio file, an Excel file, Word file, an SMS file, uh, and, of course, people and their names and the equipment. That's where the enterprise metadata is, is helpful in building up a consistent um, mobile enterprise infrastructure. But the, the thing that's become most popular in the last year or two is something called MEEP, or a mobile enterprise application platform. And this interleaves in to the back end, into uh, the servers, and provides a consistent way for all mobile apps to interface and integrate with all the different servers on the back end. There are commercial versions of MEEPs that are, that are, that are available that Tech Endeavor is, is using, and in some cases you have to write your own, a custom one, which they have done also. But uh, that's the four areas of data access that you have to consider when you start moving information back and forth between your mobile device through the firewall back into the uh, cloud of servers across all the different departments that need to be touched. So an example of this is another application being developed for a client. And they had a rather interesting challenge. They, they, uh, they wanted to put together a, a mobile interactive sales briefcase 
they wanted to use an iPad to do this. And uh, this particular solution was going to make it possible for the sales force to get access to everything in the product catalog. This is a medical equipment company that had literally thousands of products in the catalog. You can imagine the days of printing. It was probably two or three inches tall, right? But they wanted the ability to take the iPad out to the customer and have what you would consider act-on capability. In other words, this particular device could be uh, held up right there in front of the uh, client saying, what do you need? Let's see what's in stock, when it can ship, and how much is it going to cost for you based on you know, any agreements that might already be in place. To do that, well, this particular device would literally need to reach back into multiple back-end systems, manufacturing, marketing, inventory, sales, accounting, who knows, maybe even legal um, having been in field sales, uh, I can imagine how useful this would be, simply because at this point now, with over-the-air capability of wirelessly keeping it up to date, that iPad sales briefcase is always up to date with the latest product prices for the sales guys. So there's almost no need for them to come into the office to do anything that's sales-related, other than maybe sales manager-related meetings, but they're able to complete their their sales cycle right there with the client. That's pretty important. Okay, let's talk about mobile OS capabilities and update. So mobile device management, mobile data management, and policies, we've been touching on these as we've been going through here. You know, the question that probably comes to mind, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, is what happens if a sales guy loses his iPad or the manager loses the iPhone or it's stolen? This is where the Tech Endeavor strategy process covers this kind of contingency. This is sometimes referred to as mobile device management. As you have multiple apps, but how are you going to update the apps for different purposes across multiple devices? It just doesn't always make sense to, you know, the only way you can update it is to drive in and go to your, your PC. You want to be able to do that over the air. This is, again, part of mobile device management. Other things with regards to mobile data management and device management have to do with taking advantage of GPS locations, um, making available information that's specific to the particular area you're in, which makes it faster for you to access what you're looking for. And then there are other issues of strategy to consider. For instance, uh, these days uh, there's company-owned devices and there's uh, user-owned devices and the security policies and administration based on ownership will depend on you know, who owns the device and what, what are you going to be given access to. So that's where policies come into play. So we talked briefly about this term called MEEP. And uh, as you can see here, there's a lot to take in. I think the point I want to make is the slide describes the process of how MEEP works. And remember, MEEP is just a common interface for the enterprise to have a more consistent way of interfacing with multiple kinds of mobile devices and mobile apps that reach back into the different servers on the firewall and I would add, in a consistent way, so you don't have to write a different way of interfacing with the uh, back-end servers for each app. This particular topic is well understood by Tech Endeavor, and they'll go into more detail on, the, on specific strategy sessions with you. In some cases, an IT department will have uh, have already invested in a MEEP uh, platform, and in other cases, you may need to create a custom one or extend the one that's there. Let's talk uh, a little bit about a case study uh, briefly here that illustrates mobile device management. This is actually an example of a PC app, but the point is that it provides a, a, a more unified way, uh, kind of think about it as a dashboard, um, managing mobile policy and operations. Uh, the app gives you the ability to monitor the use and access and cost, you know, telecommunication costs, uh, to remotely access the device. Uh, from an enterprise perspective, you want something like this to update or delete applications over the air, as we said, versus leaving it just to the users. Sometimes you need to adjust performance issues. You need, well, you need to, uh, well, you would like to be able to get information from crashes sent back from the app if that should ever occur, so you can debug. And, uh, you know, you want a consistent way in which things are handled, so communication with mobile devices done by policy management versus a one-by-one -one basis. So 
Endeavor has been developing applications in this particular area because it's an inevitable thing that comes with an enterprise strategy with multiple devices and multiple apps. You want to start providing uh, mobility service monitoring in an automated policy management way, and that really needs to be a part of a long-term mobile strategy. There is more to you know a mobile strategy than just getting a single app created, as you can see. So let's talk about deployment and distribution. Most people on this call probably have an iPhone or a BlackBerry RIM or an Android, and you're very comfortable now in pulling down an application from that vendor's application store. But in an enterprise application store, I want you to think about this differently for a moment. There's a different agenda, essentially, than in a consumer kind of store. What you have is a requirement for much stricter standards to follow especially from the security point of view. And these are a little less obvious at first, but there are other things like screen parameters and memory size and processing power. Each one of the mobile devices work a little differently. They have different operating systems. And so you've got to give this some thought because ultimately you want an application store for the enterprise. And when you're doing that, you're going to be considering not only platform diversity, but variations of the same app for different users. You may have a light version for some, a more full-featured version for others, and some users may be on the land, which you allow certain kinds of capabilities in particular. You know, it could be large transfers of data, or it could just be extremely secure data. And then if it's being done over the, if the app is being used over the internet, it might be a slightly different app. It just depends on what you're doing. The other thing to consider is there are often regional differences in the world that can impact the way an app works, and that might be stored differently in the app store. So these are just things to, to give some thought to. And I think also user-based uh, access privileges is part of this. Um, you have obviously a greater range of users using the apps for different purposes, and in fact, we'll be talking about that. The components of an app distribution, well, we've touched on some of the issues here already. When you develop your enterprise strategy, you need to carefully consider a number of issues that impact how you distribute the app. Um, and pretty much as the, as the bullet items indicate here, you need to consider software license management and various legal issues that are involved there, especially if you're allowing vendors and resellers and contractors to use the software. You may have a different software licensing arrangement for them. Policy management, uh, we've talked a lot about that. And provisioning, is the uh, app distribution going to be location dependent? How are you going to handle patch management? If you have patches, it might be that's not an issue. Maybe just over the air, it automatically gets handled. But there's usage management. That's probably one of the largest ones. Usage management and, re and remote control for thousands, tens of thousands of remote devices becomes a very important component of the strategy. Now, let's go to target audience. The target audience is, um, you know, in some ways this probably could have been the, the first thing we covered, but it's fairly obvious that uh, it's, it's the one that makes the biggest difference on how an app is going to work. Here's an interesting example for you. Let's say you're developing an app for an airline industry, and the way the app would work in the cabin crew that's really just for time and has to get things done uh, quickly needs a you know rather minimal number of clicks to get through the checkout process and move the plane from the gate into the air. The maintenance crew, on the other hand, you know they need an extremely thorough, detailed set of maintenance screens that may require multiple clicks and steps because they have to carefully document everything that's done in a very detailed way from a data entry. So even though the same fundamental app might be needed by both with regards to getting the plane ready to move off the gate, the way in which it interacts. Is, so again, this has to do with your target audience. And it's, you know, it's important to keep this in mind because we'll come to the, uh, if you think about sitting down and creating a strategy in your mind for a moment, you've got an iPhone or a RIM, uh, BlackBerry, and you're thinking, okay, I have these apps that I've downloaded from those stores. They're kind of one size fits all. So when you're thinking about the enterprise, you're going to have different people using apps for different purposes, and the user interface is going to uh, reflect this. And what kind of data you reach back into in the in the uh, back end side is going to be impacted too, as we've um, mentioned now a couple times in the presentation. So, 
this is where I mention um, Endeavor, Tech Endeavor, uh, more specifically. This particular slide highlights the phases at a high level of the approach that Endeavor takes to analyze, plan, and recommend strategy to fit the needs of a particular enterprise. There is no one-size-fits-all strategy. It's all very, very, very unique. The first step Endeavor tries to understand is the goal of the organization, not just the goal being we need to get an app out. It's that app, but how does that app fit over the next two years with what you want to do with your mobile strategy and who in the company is going to be touched by this mobile strategy and be responsible for it and, and who's going to benefit from this mobile strategy and how is that benefit going to be shown. So once the organizational environment is really understood um, by the Endeavor plan, then we can plan out the various factors based on this understanding and the analysis uh, can be plowed into the strategy and mapped out and recommended back to the organization in a way that they can then proceed in a very uh, clear incremental approach over a period of time to get a successful mobile strategy in place. So we're now at questions, and uh, Avinash, are you with me here? Yes, Tom, I'm here. A couple of questions I can see on the panel. question is, uh, do you make your own uh, deep, uh, being uh, uh, like file enterprise application platform, uh, the question is more towards if Endeavor uh, works on building the MEEP. Uh, the answer is yes, we do have, but uh, those MEEP platforms are extending the existing ones. Like, uh, uh, as you see, uh, one of the examples that we gave in the presentation was about uh, uh, the virtual sales briefcase application where we extended the Sybase SUP platform. Uh, we also did one uh, a shorter version of MEEP uh, platform for uh, the Kimberly Clark application, which was specifically focusing on connecting to the backend database where the reporting uh, application was uh, hosted to interface with that reporting uh, database and get the details and feed it to the application, we had that uh, MEEP uh, uh, built in. So the next question I would like to take is, uh, uh, the question is like this, uh, what are the UI challenges that you face when building an enterprise application considering the small screen form factor? Indeed, a very good question. And uh, the answer to it is like, uh, we have uh, uh, lots of applications done in a different ways because as you see the fifth point in our, uh, the important factor we mentioned was the target audience. And the UI is the actual key. It really depends on what kind of user you are addressing. Like one of the applications that we had uh, done for automotive industry, we had the application being used by a technician and a foreman in the field, which are actually working on a vehicle at the same time operating the application. The intent of uh, uh, using that application was something like you hold it into one hand and be able to feed in all the information as and when you are working on that particular vehicle and at the same time fill in all the data. So something that we expected as a user experience is not something jazzy and something better, but something that you can touch with a single finger by holding the device, like you have a smartphone in your hand, at the same time you are able to reach to various different uh, buttons onto, uh, onto the device and be able to complete the transaction that you are looking at. One other application was uh, based on the tablet that we had. Uh, the tablet was something that uh, the salesperson was using it, and while the salesperson was using the tablet to be able to drill down to the data and the kind of uh, brochures that uh, the person was looking towards, be able to locate it in less than two clicks. So we had to uh, build in some sort of like a generic search functionality and give a give a user interface which would help user to. Uh, focus down on to a specific data element inside the application that he or she is looking at. That was another consideration. So basically, uh, to answer the question in a simple terms, like you need to target the audience and find out what kind of profile that they have and what kind of users that they are uh, looking towards. And based on that, you can build your uh, actual user interface. Of course, there are uh, platform guidelines to follow. You have to make sure that if you are launching your applications in general public on the App Store and all that, make sure that you follow all the human interface guidelines of underlying platforms. That is much better. 
Now, the next question uh, we have here is what is the level of security we can achieve through factor uh, authentication? Let me read this completely. Yeah. So, what is the level of security we can achieve through two factor authentication? Now, the answer is that uh, we have uh, two different uh, things. Like, generally, two factor authentication is two step, uh, two different. Uh, uh, points where you uh, validate the user first being like a user identity and the second could be session handler or session ID for each request that you have so of architecture that addresses a valid uh, session protocol uh, wherein you establish the identity and make sure that every subsequent uh, request coming from the device is addressed into the context of the underlying session is one part of it. The other part of it being the user identity itself, being like maybe you tie it up with a username, password, or you tie it up with a UDID of a device or a unique identity or a IMEI number of the device that uh, you are considering uh, for the application. So this could be like two different uh, uh, factors that you want to consider. Now, another question here, uh, Tom, how does enterprise app differ from consumer apps in terms of security and UI? A very good question. Uh, the basic difference between a consumer application and UI, uh, uh, like enterprise application, is the consumer application is targeting a wide uh, range of audience, whereas enterprise applications are targeting uh, like a limited range of audience. Uh, on top of that, consumer applications have pretty generic specifications or requirements in terms of security and UI, which is like very well uh, uh, gel up with the platform requirements. But in enterprises, every enterprise is a unique in terms like they have their own security policies. Like say, my organization has all uh, stringent policies to bring in all personal liable devices into the corporate networks. So maybe the other uh, uh, like corporates that we have already gone through. So, at terms, the security policies which are established by every organization are different, but at a, at a higher level, if I have to talk about it, it's all based on the user permissions. In the Active Directory, you have various different uh, uh, groups and various different uh, uh, user uh, permissions configured, and most of the organizations want some sort of like LDAP or Active Directory authentication to be done and give the access to the application based on If I'm a manager, I get everything. If I'm a reporter, I get a set of it. So that is how the security in terms of like getting access to the application and of course UI based on how many functionalities and what kind of role you are performing, uh, it differs. I hope I answered that question. I, I would address one more question that I have. Uh, can we use MEEP solutions for App Store application submissions? Uh, absolutely yes. There is absolutely no reason why you cannot use uh, if for uh, submitting applications that go into a public domain on app stores and all that. With that, uh, we would like to uh, close the question session uh, in the interest of time. I would advise uh, if you have more questions, please send us through emails at events at techendeavor.com. I repeat, it's events at techendeavor.com, and we will be more than happy to send you the answers. We would be also publishing our uh, uh, this entire station along with the presentation copy very soon, and we'll be uh, emailing the details to all of you. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to hand it over to Ritu. Thank you, Avinash. I would like to thank you each and everyone who has participated in this and has shown keen interest in our webinar. Thank you, Tom, for sharing your thoughts on what should be covered as a part of the mobility strategy and the essential of having enterprise mobility strategy. And also I would like to thank Avinash for answering all the questions so diligently. Thanks each and everyone.